Good morning. It's Pastor Gillespie from St. John Evangelical Lutheran Church and School, Sherman Center. That's Random Lake, Wisconsin. Our Congregation of Prayer this week is going to be a little bit abbreviated from what we've been doing since the beginning of the uh, lockdown. And the reason for that is I'm going to be out of town this week. So these are pre-recorded, and uh, I'm going to keep them just, like I said, a little bit briefer. If you've got your Congregation at Prayer, I encourage you to go uh, and pull that out, uh, or you can download it from our website. Just go, uh, I believe, under the news, church and the news section, and you'll find it there. Um, or it's in the weekly email that I send out. Um, you'll want to run that off, and you can you can actually pray the way that we normally pray. All right, so begin with an invocation, have the hymn of the, or the psalm of the week, say the memory verse out loud, say the catechism part. And then the video will have our daily readings, as well as catechesis on those readings. And then you can continue uh, by singing the hymn, confessing the creed, saying the prayer, uh, keeping other folks in the prayers based off the prayers that are on the back of the bulletin, which again, you can pull up on the website, um, and then closing with Lord's Prayer and morning prayer, or evening prayer as the case may be. Um, so I'd encourage you to do that in your home, and then use these videos for your daily readings. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our reading, first reading today is from Isaiah chapter 28. Therefore, thus says the Lord God, Behold, I lay in Zion a stone for a foundation, a tried stone, a precious cornerstone, a sure foundation. Whoever believes will not act hastily. And I will make justice the measuring line and righteousness the plummet. The hail will sweep away the refuge of flies and the waters will overflow the hiding place. Your covenant with death will be annulled, and your agreement with Sheol will not stand. When the overflowing scourge passes through, then you will be trampled down by it. As often as it goes out, it will take you, for morning by morning it will pass over, and day by day, or excuse me, and by day and by night, it will be a terror. Just to understand the report. There ends our first reading. And then our reading for catechesis today is from Matthew chapter 11. We're continuing there. Then he began to rebuke the cities in which most of the mighty, most of his mighty works had been done because they did not repent. Woe to you, Chorazin. Woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have repented long ago, in sackcloth and ashes. But I say to you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon in the day of judgment than for you. And you, Capernaum, who are exalted to heaven, will be brought down to Hades. For if the mighty works which were done in you had been done in Sodom, it would have remained until this day. But I say to you, that it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom in the day of judgment than for you. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for it so it seemed good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Come to me, all you who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden light. So, whom did Jesus renounce and why? Who do you see there at the beginning of our reading? Who did he renounce? Yeah, this, these are the cities in which most of his mighty works had been done. And the cities mentioned by name are Chorazin, Bethsaida, and Capernaum, right? Yeah, and Capernaum, verse 23. To whom are they compared? Verse 21. That's where it gets a little tricky. Yeah, they're compared to Tyre and Sidon. Now, what's the history of those cities, Tyre and Sidon? They're often linked together in the scriptures, and they're linked together because of their 
examples of unbelief. So for example, here is Jeremiah 47, verse 4. Because of the day that comes to plunder all the Philistines, to cut off from Tyre and Sidon every helper who remains, for the Lord will pl- shall plunder the Philistines, the remnant of the country of Kaftor. Baldness will come, has come upon Gaza. Ashkelon is cut off with the remnant of their valley. How long will you cut yourself? Right. So Tyre and Sidon there are listed um, as like emblematic cities of the Philistines. And of course, Isaiah 23 preaches against uh, the burden against Tyre, Jeremiah 25, all the kings of Tyre and all the kings of Sidon, all the kings of the coastline which are across the sea. We'll see judgment. Ezekiel 26, um, Ezekiel pre- preaches against Tyre and Sidon, uh, Amos 1, Zechariah 9, just to give some examples. <laughs> um, to whom is Capernaum compared to? See that in verse 23. Capernaum is compared to Sodom. Wow, and what's the history of the city of Sodom? Yeah, Sodom was destroyed because of uh, it had rebelled completely against the Creator. You can see this in Genesis 19. The sun had risen upon the earth when Lot entered Zoar. Then the Lord rained, there it is, brimstone and fire on Sodom and Gomorrah from, from the Lord God out of heavens. So he overthrew those cities, all the plain, all the inhabitants of the cities and what grew on the ground. Of course, you have to go back and read more of the story. Okay, so what can be learned by these comparisons and these warnings, these warnings and comparisons? What does Jesus want you to learn here? Specifically, he's talking to these the residents of these cities and he's calling them to hear and believe the words and the works that he had done among them. But by mentioning Tyre and Sidon and Sodom, he's showing what rejecting his words, what happens when you reject his words, that the judgment would be even harsher than on the cities that never knew him. All right. Now, who are the wise and the prudent? See, he calls the wise and the prudent here in verse 25. Yeah, those who have much earthly wisdom and philosophy. All right, so this is earthly wise, earthly prudent. Uh, Remember, I think on Saturday we looked at uh, 1 Corinthians, uh, but it's worth doing again. We'll just do a briefer section. Uh, i got to type it correctly. 1 Corinthians, verse 20. There we go. Where is the wise? Where is the scribe? Where is the disputer? Here it is. Of this age, has God... Has not God made foolish the wisdom of this world? For since in the wisdom of God, the world through wisdom did not know God, it pleased God through the foolishness of the message preached to save those who believe. All right. Get back to where we were. There we are. Very good. Um, So what is hidden from them, from these wise and prudent in the way of the world? Yeah, the same thing that came in the previous section. All right, the mighty works which were done and the word, all right, which had been given to them and revealed Jesus to be the Son of God. Um, But note, he does reveal them to babes. (laughs) Love that. Love that word. Uh, Napios, excuse me. Uh, Little babies. Um, Who are those? Yeah, do not forbid them for of such belongs the kingdom of heaven, right? Right. These are those who have the gift of faith to know the Son. Right? It's as simple as that. Maybe um, if we look forward, say, to Matthew 18, you'll see it there. Jesus called the little child to him, set them in the midst of them, and said, Assuredly, I say to you, unless you are converted and become like little children, there it is, you will by no means enter the kingdom of heaven. All right? Or we can go outside of Matthew today. How about First John? Uh, two. I write to you, little children, because your sins are forgiven you for his name's sake. Oh, which is what you heard in the sermon. On Sunday as well. All right. Uh, what does this, or who reveals this to the little children? 
Yeah, look at verse 26. Even so, Father, for so it seemed good in your sight. Right? So it's the Father in heaven. What does verse 27 tell us about faith? All things have been delivered to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father. Nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and here it is, and the one to whom the Son wills to reveal him. Now, faith in Jesus is a gift of God, not an intellectual act that leads to a decision, but rather it's given. Uh, What's the Hebrew word for, for I will give you rest, for that word rest? It's anapao in Greek, but it's, yeah, Sabbath, right? So this is the rest um, on the seventh day that God did in Genesis 2. Um, It's also the rest that God gives his people, say in Exodus 20, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days you shall labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is a Sabbath, a day of rest, of the Lord your God. In it you shall do no work, you nor your son, nor your daughter, nor your male servant, male female servant, nor your cattle, your stranger who is within your gates. And then the reason for this is for in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it, set it apart. Right? I guess we all need a day of rest. Who are those who are labor who labor and are heavy laden? Hmm. Who are those who labor and are heavy laden? Here's Jesus in uh, Matthew 23. The scribes and the Pharisees sit in Moses' seat. Therefore, whatever you, they tell you to observe, they observe and do, but do not do according to their works, for they say and do not do. For they bind heavy burdens hard to bear and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them with one of their fingers. All right, so this is referring, of course, to the Pharisees uh, and those hypocrites, right? Yeah. Those who lay upon, upon you the harsh burden of the law, uh, but who do not bear it themselves. Uh, those are the Pharisees. Whereas Jesus here is talking about those who suffer under the weight of the burden of the law. So what rest then is Jesus talking about? Now he's talking about rest for body and soul. He's talking about the rest that he gives in the forgiveness of sins. Right? What's the yoke? I don't think we have. You might see this if you go to like a, um, oh, some kind of like heritage land or something where they're um, driving oxen. But it's a wooden bar or frame that goes across and rests upon the neck of two draft animals. I suppose you use them with horses too, right? So that they can work together while pulling the burden. All right, so it's a yoke um, that joins and is used for driving for work. Why is his yoke easy and his burden light? Well, if this heavy laden yoke that's put upon you, well, if the heavy laden is the law, the yoke that you take upon you actually huh, is the yoke that he gives you. He takes your burdens, right, and then gives you his righteousness. So he takes the harsh burden of the law upon himself and then bears away the curse of sin upon his own body to free you from death, giving you a lighter load. There's a meditation on this text. Jesus denounces the Jews who would not hear and believe him even though they had the Old Testament. Tyre and Sidon had been two great enemies of Israel and were denounced by the prophets of old. But Jesus says that they would have repented if they had seen his works. The example of Nineveh would be a fitting comparison. Also, see Jonah 3 or Matthew 12. Jesus uses Sodom as an example just as Isaiah does. As Isaiah had compared Israel to Gomorrah in his prophecy. Jesus is condemning the lack of faith among the people of Israel. It is then that he reveals that faith is a gift which comes from the Father. The truth about Christ and his salvation is revealed to children, that is, to all who have been baptized into Christ. In baptism we are brought to Christ, and he gives us rest. All right, there ends our meditation for today, um, this being Monday, June 6th, 2020. Uh, Thank you for joining us. I encourage you to, again, use the congregation at prayer uh, and continue by singing the hymn, if you like, and confessing the creed saying the collect for this week, praying for those in need, which are on the back of our bulletin. 
and concluding with the Lord's Prayer and Luther's morning prayer. Lord be with you all, and we'll see you tomorrow.